happening. I mean, give me a left-wing Hillary policy, like a really left-wing Hillary policy. I couldn't tell you, but that's, exactly. I'm not. I'm there not. Is <laughs> David Pakman was a guest on Patrick Bet David's Bro Biz podcast to engage in a debate. And it shows how clearly David Pakman is able to dismantle MAGA right wingers like Patrick Bet David with facts. We're going to see a stark contrast in styles, and I would say intelligence. With these clips from the Patrick Bet David show, I will share my thoughts from time to time as well. Let's check this out together. Opinion of the U.S. has dramatically improved since Biden replaced Trump. I think that matters. I, I'm not an isolationist, so I think it's important that other countries respect the office of the presidency. And under Trump, it was a joke, you know, P literally laughed at at the UN, goes to India, mispronounces 10 Indian names and the crowd is just leaving it. It's a, it was a humiliation everywhere he went. So I think that's a great, it's like a soft thing that I think is really good. So the, the fact that we're no longer feared is a good thing. I don't know where you're getting that we are no longer feared. So you think people fear Biden? W what I'm asking you is where, what data do you have that we are no longer feared? The, well, that's not a, that's, what data is not uh, any data to give. I mean, during- well, then how do you know it is Well, no, but, but during, Bi during Biden is when Russia felt comfortable bullying Ukraine. During Biden is, uh, even if you look at Afghanistan on the way we left, people on the left were not happy by the way we left Afghanistan. Which people? Even 82 billion, I can give you a lot of different names. Like who? CIA, uh, who was the CIA guy that we had here who was on? Uh, Philip Mudd. Z with a Z, what's his name? Uh, um, Matt Zeller. Matt Zeller, CIA agent who was on MSNBC. He called him out. He was on MSNBC with- uh, Quick thing about Afghanistan. All of these right-wingers like Patrick Bet David did not give a damn about- what a disaster Afghanistan was in terms of all the lives lost in the trillions of dollars that were spent in Afghanistan. They didn't give a damn about any of those lives, any of the American soldiers injured, the trillions of dollars spent. They only cared about Afghanistan when Biden left. So. Patrick Bet David is full of crap. Uh, but that's one person, right? No, but there's a lot of them though. If I, if I actually, if I, if I actually yeah. pull it up and if, if I if I do the Google search yeah. on it, I'll find plenty of names from their own side. Let's do it. That's fine. But I think one important thing to back up is you first kind of gave me what's not really a very fair question. You go, are you not worried that the U.S. is no longer feared? So, so you're saying they they don't fear? You hold, but hold on, let me finish. Let me finish my yeah. response. Okay, yeah. you first presented to me, and these are th a lot of conversations go like this. You present to me, is it not a concern to me that the U.S. is no longer feared? And I said, well, where are you getting that? Where, where's the data? You go, oh, there is no data. So where? Let's first start with. No, no the, what I, I said is, is it's not the, the fear. I didn't say there's no data. You can't. You can't you pull data. No data. Meaning you can't find data on fear. Fear then how is, do you know that that's fear the case? is action? Fear is action. Did did during uh, did during Trump Russia attack Ukraine? S no, that's did, not did, yeah. what happened with Palestine and Israel. What happened? Yeah, what happen? happened? They came together after twenty some years. What? What are you talking about when you say what are what? you talking about? <laughs> Hold on. Well, a he second. moved the capital to Jerusalem, is what you're saying. So let's. Talk I don't know about if there's that. been peace let's in the Middle East or anything like that. Has there been any progress on peace? Very limited. Did moving the cap? Did move? It wasn't the capital. Did moving the embassy? The embassy. Hold correct, on a second. Correct. Let me ask the question. Did moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem get us closer to peace, or did it get us further further away? Do either of you guys know? I don't know if you've studied this issue. There's I have arguments some. on both ends, but it has not led to peace and prosperity in Palestine. Correct. Did Trump promise this? This very critical, clear question. Did Trump promise that Jared Kushner? Kushner would solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict during the first term. That's now, before, that's just overreach. a yes, no. Did he, did he promise it? Uh, I don't know if he promised it or promises made, promises kept. He was assigned to that duty. And did it happen? Did what happened? Did Jared negotiate no peace. but i don't think anybody believed that peace was happening in so the it's East. okay for him to make promises but, but that are obvious but, lies? but, but make the but the... make the make the argument go yeah. back to the argument about the fact that america on all polls today is would you say liked what was the word you used so i i think the really important thing when we talk about this is we talk mm. about what we can measure so the gallup polling that has been done so you trust polls Oh, come on. That so we're gonna, but, but that's where we're going, though. 
There are. So where, do, where are you going to get the data from in terms of, are we just going to go based on Patrick Bet David's feelings about what other countries think of the United States? Or are we going to look at polling of what other countries think about the United States? Our allies didn't know what the hell Donald Trump was going to do, which is not a good situation to be in when you're talking about tra uh, uh, treaties and things like that, because... You don't know if you make a treaty, you know, let's say Germany makes some kind of a treaty with the Biden administration, and then they don't know if a clown like Donald Trump is going to get back in the White House and get rid of that treaty. There are lots because of Because I, I trust certain polls too, but I'm saying, so you trust polls. If you say, do I trust a Rasmussen Republican primary poll 18 months before an election, I would say that's, a, that's not very valuable. I don't right. think that's valuable. The Gallup public opinion sentiment poll that has been done over many, many presidents in the same way. I think that that's a pretty good poll just to give a sense of how the world feels about the American president. I have no reason to distrust that. There are other polls where I would have a specific reason to distrust, but we're kind of going like 10, 10 tangents here. I think if we want to talk about, am I upset that the U.S. isn't feared? Since you brought that question forward, the appropriate thing would be for you to give me the data. But no, for, go, go back to what you but, said. You said U.S. is what? You said you like the fact that U.S. is liked more today under Biden? No, I didn't use that term. What was the term you used? If you don't Globally, mind saying it again. On average, yeah. countries respect the U.S. more now that Biden is president. And, and you, Trump you is value president. that. I think it's important because okay. I, and I, can I tell you why? Sure. I think it's important because between trade and globalization mm -hmm. and problems we deal with that don't respect the borders of countries, it's important to be, again, it's not about liked, it's not about, it's to be respected globally. I do think that that actually so, matters. So why do you think they didn't like or respect Trump? Another quick thing. Why would we not want other countries to res respect us? We want to be disrespected because that's what the United States was under Donald Trump. Donald Trump always says how these other countries are laughing at us. Yeah, they're laughing at him. They're laughing at his followers. I mean, Patrick Bet David is not too bright, I don't think, but you, I would think he would be able to understand this. Let's see what you're going to say with that. Why I mean, do you think? Tell me. The, the guy's a joke. He is. Yeah. Okay. Tell us why. And, Bi and Biden's not a joke. Well, we can, we can talk about Biden. Oh, because we Biden's like the goat and, no, 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 and Trump's no. the joke. And of course, what a badism for Patrick Bet David. If you, if you criticize, you know, if you say, oh, I don't like Donald Trump, then that means that you love Joe Biden because Patrick Bet David and MAGA are, it's just team sports to them. This is my team. I'm going to support them no matter what. I hate your team. Instead of, you know, this guy isn't an adult. He's a child. Patrick Bet David. Joke. No, 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 no. Okay, so why, I, I'm critical so tell us about, why he's a joke. But I think it's important to say, are we talking about Trump or are we talking about Biden? No, we no. Can talk so, about so both, identify let's both. Talk about them one at a time. S stay on Trump. Okay, stay on Trump fair. when he says he's a joke. Tell us okay. why you think he's a joke. Um, promises made that were not kept that he told us he was going to achieve for us. Let's look at some of them. I'm going to get rid of Ob Obamacare and replace it with his word, a beautiful replacement where everyone will have care and it's going to be affordable. Okay. Just flat out didn't happen. The one proposal that Republicans made would have led to 24 to 32 million people losing health care. I consider that a failure. I don't think Obamacare is perfect, but it's better than the think Trump thing Trump said he was going to bring us. That was, that was a, just a failure. Two, build a wall across the entire U.S.-Mexico border, which Mexico is going to pay for. It's not even worth having a conversation. I mean, just a joke. Of course, of course, completely didn't happen. Solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. No progress made. In fact, to be honest, and this is, you know, if we want to delve into that, moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem got us further from that because it's seen as a sort of um, uh, a taunting measure, if you understand the internal politics of what's, what's going on there. Um, was going to, you know, the, the made some space travel promises. I mean, we could, I can't think of promises he made that he did keep other than build the wall. Um, I get he definitely didn't keep that promise and Mexico was going to pay for it. That's the, the, he was going to do tax reform and he did tax reform. So as a policy matter, 
a complete and total failure. I do think maybe the First Step Act on criminal justice reform did some good things. I'm, I'm sort of glad to, to give him credit on that. Um, but so, you know, on policy, failure. And then, you know, on rhetoric, we could spend three hours just looking at quotes. If, if you know? co so, so I'm curious to see exactly how you think now. So yeah. if, if, if COVID doesn't happen, does he get reelected? Yes. Why? Well, because his followers don't care about policy. Uh, I interview them all the time and I say- his followers don't care about policy. They don't care about achievements. They care about Hillary bad, Hillary yeah. Marxist, Hillary socialist. You think Owning the left. Hillary's good. Did I say that? No, I'm asking you. Oh, no, uh, I don't think Hillary was a good candidate and she's, she's to my right. Um, no, I don't think Hillary's good, but I thought she was better than Trump. She's to your right. She's to my right. Yeah, Hillary so is a very- she be a moderate conservative Democrat she, yeah, in your world. Yeah, yeah. Got it. I mean, give me a left-wing Hillary policy, like a really left-wing Hillary policy. I couldn't tell you, but that's- exactly. I'm not I'm the <laughs> Of course, because Patrick about David is not someone who engages in facts. It's all about what he's feeling. But, but it's not the point. But you're saying you would much rather have a Hillary than a Trump. I would rather. Okay, so go back. To, <laughs> much rather, so, I don't know. So so go back to he gets reelected. Why? Because his uh, uh, voters could care less about policies. They That's what you're saying. Care less. Fine, no problem. So, but we both know that it's not the right that elects him, and it's not the left that elects whoever on the left. It's whoever's in the middle. The, not true. the eight to twelve percent that kind of says, you know what? I'm going to go this side, you know, this time around or versus more people come out for, you know, their candidate, meaning a lot Not of people really would true. come out for Obama. Okay, so explain yourself. The, the, what, what it actually more depends on is who chooses to go out and vote. It's less about, you know, there's, there's often this idea in politics and there's lots of people who are really good on this issue that you could talk to, Rachel Bittekoffer and even Frank Luntz, even though he's partisan, I think he would concede this as well. He's a pollster, right. you mean, the, yes. Frank Luntz, yeah. The idea of the swing independent voter that sometimes on, on presidential elections will vote for a Republican and sometimes a Democrat, very, very small percentage of people. More common is that a candidate either activates people to vote or those same people just stay home. In the US, we have an embarrassingly low voter voter turnout. It's between usually, usually 52 and 60%, I think. Mm -hmm. So almost half the electorate isn't even voting. It's less about people who vote one way and then another way. It's more about people who say, I'm just gonna stay home versus I'm going to go out and vote. If they vote, it's clear. So know you're saying that for. the middle voter doesn't matter at all? No, I didn't say that. So what are you saying? Then? I said they matter much less than who who is partisan chooses to vote. But it's to fair home. to say that, okay, if, if he continues, so if he continues and there's no COVID, he would get reelected. Do you think, the, let's specifically target the middle. Forget the people on the side that would show up. Okay? Well, but why? That's, That's the question I want to do with you right now. So if we, if we specifically focus on the middle with the middle the independent the libertarians would they have chosen to stick with trump or would most have wanted to replace him with somebody else it's a polling question i don't have the data well you're the poll guy so i'm asking you I, I don't have the data in front okay of me. i'd be yeah. curious to know so you're but, but you're also correcting me to say that's not true that's the middle and the independents that that didn't elect him you're saying it's who showed up that elected him as a general concept right elections swing less based on independents who sometimes vote Republican and Democrat, that's a small factor. A bigger factor is, are voters activated by their candidate or are they deactivated where they go, I don't like this person, but I'm definitely not voting for that one, I'll stay home. So Isn't it you, a bit of both though? It's a bit of both. Because we I'm also what happened in the Rust the Belt, we've seen countless stories about, I voted for Obama, I'm not racist, I voted for Obama, what are you talking about? I voted for Bush, then I voted for Obama, and then Trump showed up, he made some promises, he he, he was in the Midwest, he was, yeah. it was, it was, he was out there, he was, he was reaching out, touching sure. hands, Hillary was too busy in New Mexico and Arizona, I decided to vote for Trump, and I was sort of done with Trump, now yeah. I'm back on Biden. Yeah, that's we an, see so many stories like that, that's though, an, these that's independents. An, that's an anecdote, and so I think anecdotes are, are fine, but one of the things that, um, uh, is important is to, to zoom out from anecdotes and to look at the broader data. And the other thing that's important is a lot of that 
cross voting, it cancels each other out because you see roughly the same amount from one side versus the other. And what I, what I mean by that is there was, if you look at the crossover in 2016, the number of Democrats who decided to vote Trump in 2016 was very similar to the number of Democrats who decided to vote McCain in 2008. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's it's a roughly predictable number. And you're and, talking about Democrats who have switched over. I'm about just there's legitimate independents. I'm giving you just one yeah, example yeah. of this people who go either way or, or whatever it's it's relatively stable and predictable so it's rarely a difference maker that that's my only point and we can anecdotes all day you know jim bob's wife decided to vote hillary or what you know it's that's totally fine but, but let's do data because you're a data guy yeah. so if you're a data guy tell us when you're saying it's not necessarily that the middle one would have had trump yeah would he have needed the middle to get reelected in 2024 in 2020 he would have needed roughly the same percentage that right. Republicans tend to need. Trump suffered because they're there on, on the covid thing. Would he have gotten reelected? It's not only if covid didn't happen, Trump probably would have gotten reelected. I think if when covid started, instead of Trump saying we have 15 cases soon going to be zero, do flu vaccines work on covid? What about bleach injections? All that stuff. If, if instead of that, Trump said, hey, you know what? We're the United States. We're going to deal with this better than anybody else. We're making MAGA masks. And by the way, 50 cents on every dollar will go, you know, his, his normal fundraising scams, right? Do the scams, but do the MAGA masks. And if he said, we're going to be absolutely the best on this thing, he wins. We saw it in New Zealand. We saw it in other places. It was a missed opportunity. Now, I think it was just a miscalculation in the sense that somewhere Trump probably thought it was really going to go away. I don't know by who was Easter. around him. I don't by know Easter. by Easter of 2020, right? right? I mean, right. It, okay. So I think Trump, even if he had just done that, and uh, because we but saw- why though? Why, why would he have? Why, why, would the, why would the independents, the ones in the middle be, who are- It's pretty simple, I think. Again, Patrick but David, uh, he's, he's obsessed with these people in the middle. And, you know, David Pakman has presented what- He's presenting as facts that the people in the middle don't really matter that much. And I think it's funny that Patrick Bet David says that all the libertarians are the middle. The libertarians are right wingers, essentially. Um, but I felt all along, I agree totally with what David Pakman is saying here. If Trump, you know, instead of Trump being vain and not wearing a mask, if he had come out and said, you know, I'm the manliest man that you've ever seen. And I wear a mask because real men wear masks and I'm a real man. Don't you want to be a real man? And all the MAGA people would have fallen in line and worn a mask. And like David Pakman says, Trump probably would have won. But because he was not presidential, because he's a clown and a loser, Donald Trump lost the election. But what do you think about this uh, exchange between David Pakman and Patrick Bet David and that his... Patrick Bet David's co-host here, Adam. Uh, it's, it seems like right wingers don't like Adam very much, but he, to me, he's a lot smarter than what Patrick Bet David is. It, it, you know, more reasonable. You know, I don't know what his views are on it of anything, but and it on on everything rather. But he he's a lot sharper than Patrick Bet da David, I believe. But as usual, pa uh, David Pakman just makes mince meat of these MAGA right-wingers like Patrick Bet David. But what do you think? Do you agree? Let me know in the comments. Do you think Patrick Bet David did better in this debate or did David Pakman do better in this debate? If you're interested in watching the whole thing, you can go to Patrick Bet David's Valuetainment channel. The whole thing is on there. It's about 35 minutes long. Uh, make sure to give me a like and subscribe.